Here we go. Yeah. So my name is Jim Reed. I'm with Summit Funding and I run Next Level Coaching, which is an internal program. And uh, today I get to do something that's fun, um, uh, not just work, but gets to be fun. So these two ladies we have um, that are doing this leveraged event, this video and learn are personal friends of mine. We grew up together in the coaching business at a company. Wow, your pictures look great, lady. Wow. So we grew up together in the coaching industry at a company called The Core Training. Um, I can't, uh, I can't think of, I can't think of any two realtors that have more experience, not only doing real estate, but teaching real estate, right? So there's one thing to be able to do something, uh, but to be able to, to articulate it and, and help other people learn and grow, I think is a pretty unique skill. I think it's pretty special. Um, and these both, these ladies both have it. These, these ladies both run real estate teams that are boutique. So what that means is you hear real estate teams and it's like the Jim Reed real estate team. There's like 72 buyer's agents, right? And no one really knows each other. And it's not even really a team, but somehow they get to count all their numbers together to put their name up on some leaderboard. These ladies ain't like that. These ladies are blue collar on the street doing transactions every day, meeting with sellers, meeting with buyers, showing property, fighting for listings, arguing about commissions. Uh, figuring out what marketing piece to send out, when to send it out, all that stuff that we all do and think about every day and wonder what's the right way? How many times is the right number of times? What should I say when this happens? All that stuff is what they can help you with. So I can't give them a stronger endorsement than that. I think I think of them as family. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to Marjorie Adam and my girl Haley Garcia. You guys take it away. Have a good time and rock and roll. Thank you, Jimmy. Yep. Thanks, Jimmy. And we love us some Jimmy Reed. Right. So thank you guys so much for being here today. So Haley and I are super excited um, to talk to you. And, and, and where we really want to get into is goal setting, which we both do um, and have done for years. It's super important. Um, good market, bad market, whatever it may be. Um, goal setting. And then, of course, I mean, if anyone in here has too many leads, I guess you can go um, because that is not the case for most of us. So really goals, you know, increasing our leads as well as setting our goals to end the year. So I'm very honored to be able to teach with Haley. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, so I, um, so yes, he, Jimmy said boutique firm. So I'm in with a firm called Nest Realty. I do not own it, but I am a broker here. Um, I have been a realtor for 27 years since I was just a small child. I have been a realtor. Um, I've been a realtor coach. Uh, and Jimmy mentioned the core training. So I, I really was fortunate. It was a great um, learning experience and start. And, and I really got just really comfortable coaching and teaching and, and learned a lot of skills um, there. And I do have a five person team. So smaller team. Um, and Haley does as well. And I'm going to have she's going to introduce herself too. But I've known Haley for many years. Uh, we were coaches together. We have are very good friends. We've traveled together. She does crazy things like stay in a yurt in the jungle. Um, and, and, you know, she's definitely she we get together. I'm like her little Barbie head and she'll straighten my hair. <laughs> Um, but one thing I can tell you about you, nobody um, is more centered. No one is more clear on, you know, how important it is to take care of yourself before you can take care of everyone else. She keeps me super grounded. Um, she, we have just a great time. We really do. So we do laugh a lot, which I think is super important. Um, and I think we're a good yin and yang mix in what we do. So Haley, tell them a little bit about you. Thank you, Marjorie. Yes, um, I will. I will also start by saying I'm happy to be here with you and super honored to to teach with you. Marjorie is, um, while she is my my best hippie friend and is covered in tattoos, she is a fierce businesswoman as well. And so we we share information with one another, and I learn from her so much every time we're together as well. So um, I'm happy to be here with you, Marge. Super, super happy. Um, you guys, I have sold real estate for 24 years. I have a seven person team. I'm in the Woodlands, Texas, which is just outside of Houston. Uh, last year, we did 130 million in business, uh, just over uh, 180 units. We do sell luxury for the most part. We sell everything, but uh, I definitely am a luxury agent um, with the listing side of the business for sure. 
I uh, have several corporate accounts. I have some whale accounts. I have builder accounts. And uh, I teach a lot on how to build those relationships, how to be part of the community. We're going to talk about a lot of that today. Um, I also have been a coach for 15 years. I do um, a hybrid model of a work-life integration coaching with multi-industry, as well as uh, real estate and mortgage. So um, a little bit more... Um, hybrid model of coaching in my experience. And um, definitely the real estate is, is always a mainstay uh, because it's what I do every day. So I'm, I'm happy to be here with you guys. And I think our topic today that Marjorie and I really, really put some thought into that was going to give you guys some, some nuggets of information and some tactical items to walk away and do after our, our, uh, presentation today will will hopefully be beneficial for your business because it's the time of the year where not only do we normally set goals and we kind of reassess our business and our team structure and our finances, um, but in this shifting market, it's it's critical that we really get grounded in where are we going and where have we been. Um, Marjorie, do you want me to kick it off or you? Yes, we're going to have you kick off. Where okay. have we been, Neely? Okay. So, as it relates to where we've been, guys, we all can go back to COVID days in most of our markets and think about, well, it might not have been easy because we were selling so much business. It was easy, right? We had buyers lining up to get the houses. Uh, as a listing agent, I just kind of sat back and popped everything on a spreadsheet, decided which offer we were going to take because we had so many to choose from. We obviously had super low interest rates. Um, you know, the skill set that I had to hone a couple of years now was how do I pick the best offer with the sellers? That that was the skill set that I needed. And that was about it. Um, I needed to get the listings, of course, but really the business had been easy for the most part. Um, we didn't have to think about how to convince the buyers to buy the homes. We didn't have to think about how to convince the sellers to sell the homes. Um, the marketing wasn't needed. All we had to do was stick a sign in the yard. And even at that point, I don't know about you guys, but I was selling most of the listings off market to my team's buyers because we just had it all in house. So where we've been was, you know, in Texas, we call it the gravy train and that's what it's been. So now we're shifting. And I know I felt it in my business. Um, I, I am down about 25% this year, which is like a stab to the heart. And we also will be able to continue to sell houses and grow if we get our goals and our mindset right. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, Marjorie, tell us where we're going. Well, so where we're going. So I think it's hard because you guys can't all raise your hands, but Haley and I, as you can see, have done this for a long time. We are veterans. We have been through market shifts before. So I think everyone who's sort of panic a little bit right now, it's time to kind of sit back and realize this too shall change, this too shall pass, um, but that these markets come and go. So the ebb and flows are important. They can't all be, now let's be clear, any of us that worked with lots of buyers, you know that it was not fun, right? Listing agents was like, yes, uh, buyer agents, not so fun, but let's really think about where we're going and what's going to shift, right? So I firmly believe we are by no means in a 2008 market. If you were here then, it wasn't a lot of fun. That's not where we are now. We don't have subprime mortgages. We have many different factors right now. But if you haven't really, really paid attention to any NAR reports or any reports that are out about how often people will move, those people that moved every, let's say, seven years, their forecast, and I hate to tell you this, but met with an NAR economist yesterday, was like 18 years, right? People will think they're going to now, they'll move before that because they'll have life events. But for us, for like Kaylee and I, who are very database centric, um, I could count on everyone moving, let's say, every four to six years. Now they're going to move much less often. Right. So if that database is moving less often, we have to have better sources and more sources of clients. Right. Interest rates, clearly three percent's gone. I put seven in here, like obviously they've shifted a little bit, but we aren't seeing 3% rates. Plus think about if I got in a house at a 2.8% rate or 3% rate, how quickly am I going to want to move on the real trend? So right now, fewer fewer sellers, right? So we have an inventory shortage, harder to attract clients, right? So it's going to be harder. It's going to be more work for the leads that you get, right? And you need to have stronger closing skills because if 
you want to continue to earn your commission. We are 6% here. That's what we believe in. We don't commission cut. Not here to judge if you do, but if you're going to earn your commission, you better hone your closing skills, right? And you have to get back to the point of negotiation, negotiation with a seller to make sure they understand it ain't February no more, right? February, she gone. She gone. Bye bye, February. Now it's time that you got to figure out how to negotiate again, right? So, as we get into that, you have to know, right, your strengths. It's right here, your goals, your why. Your plan has to be clear. Where your clients are coming from have to be clear. Your activities have to be clear. Where you're spending your money has to be clear, right? So where we're going is a different market, but we've been there before. Haley and I have done this multiple times, right? So when I started and bought my first house, it was like an eight and a half percent interest rate. And I was like, oh, that's good, right? So if you've been here long enough, you've been here before. If you haven't, you're going to get through it right? You're going to be held accountable and you'll get through it. So what we're going to get into, so I'm going to hand this off to Haley to start, but we're going to, let's start talking about your business planning. So Haley, I mean, I don't know how many years you've done a SWAT. I've done one for gosh, 15 years, probably now at least. Um, you too? Yeah. Yeah. About the same, at least. Um, it's always been one of my favorite exercises because it really does slow us down long enough to really look at our business and understand what the SWAT is within the business. And I believe, and I think Marjorie, you agree with me, the only way we're really going to be strategic about coming up with a plan to sustain and still have growth in a market like this is to get very finite information on our business and understand what we need to change down to, you know, what exactly are we spending on marketing? Is the marketing having an ROI? How can we cut the marketing by 7% and maintain the ROI? I mean, getting really detailed about these things is going to be critical to make us successful. There's no doubt. And I think, so it's a detailed analysis of the business, right? And so if you are an agent with no team, you do this yourself. You can, right. you, you do a SWOT analysis alone. If you have a team, you involve the team. So this this the clarity for me on a team is I don't do a SWOT and tell them here's your here's your weaknesses. Here's it's my weaknesses, the team weaknesses, our weaknesses. So that everyone completes this. We all talk about it together. So if you haven't done one, you need to complete a SWOT analysis. So Haley, you're going to get us started on the strengths and weaknesses and things for them to yes. focus. Yes, and we will share these slides. Um, and Marjorie, thank you for pointing that out because just for reference, I do a SWOT with my team. And if you have a team, even if you're a team of two, the more collaboration, the better, because everyone sees things from a different perspective. So you as the team leader might understand the numbers and the P&L the most, but to hear your entire team's collaborative thoughts on each of these categories can be really beneficial. And then what we do on our team is for every single category, we come up with the top five action items that we're going to implement, and then we assign them to somebody on the team with a deadline. So as you're making notes, as we go through, I would include that in your to-dos, um, especially if you have a team to get full buy-in from everybody and to, to really have a full scope SWOT. So when you start with the strengths, these are things that are obviously going to be favorable. They're going to be things that we want to capitalize on and really push forward, not only as an evidence of success, but as the area where we're going to use to create the most leverage possible within our business. So the examples we have up here today are experience. If you're an agent that's been in the business a long time, you've obviously got experience under your belt. What if you're an agent that hasn't been in the business a long time? Well, you could collaborate with other agents that have been to make sure you're learning about your market as quickly as possible. You could really do market studies to understand what's happening in your neighborhoods to be able to speak educated based on the appreciation rates that are happening, based on how often our comps turning over. You can talk about different comps that have sold in certain amount of days versus ones that didn't and really teach yourself the experience that you need, regardless of how long you might've been selling. Uh, client relationships are huge. We're gonna talk about some ways to build additional relationships and to strengthen them in a few minutes. Market knowledge kind of goes with experience, right? So, you you know, I believe in times like this, if you're in an office of agents, if you haven't sold anything in a neighborhood that you live in, maybe, right? It could be your own neighborhood. It could be a neighborhood that you want to farm in. You can still partner with other agents in your office. And right now, you guys, is the time we have to build on one another's strengths and ask one another to collaborate. 
So if you feel lacking in market knowledge, go find an agent that has it and ask them to teach you and mentor you. Uh, weaknesses. These are things that are going to be uh, unfavorable, things that could potentially cause challenges for us. Um, we want to work on how can we strengthen them, or we want to work on how can we let them go and focus on a strength. Maybe there's something that needs to trade. So lead sources could definitely be a weakness. If you don't have enough sources, especially in this market, we need to gain more. Consistent marketing. The word consistent is a huge weakness in the land of real estate. You agree, Marjorie? Oh, yes. Uh, consistent marketing is about the same as going to the gym every day, you guys. We have to do it all the time. You cannot farm to a neighborhood twice and go, well, I'm going to quit that because I didn't get a deal. Farming consistency, in my opinion, you're at like a two to five year run to really start seeing a turnover on farming. But consistent marketing in this market, I think, is even more important because you guys know how many agents are going to leave the business, right? We're going to have a cleansing. So what does that mean for the rest of us that are still here that continue to consistently market? All of a sudden, we're going to take market share and we're going to gain more of it. But we have to be consistent with keeping our name and our face and our relationships at the forefront. And then time management. Time management, you guys, I mean, we could obviously do a, a 12 hour workshop on time management. But one thing that I wanted to mention today, something happens when we all get a little bit slower and we have more time. And I don't know about you guys, but somehow when I have more time, I get less done. And so in this market, I think really planning and understanding if that's one of your weaknesses and planning out your calendar and knowing the intentional activities you're going to schedule and you're not going to negotiate with yourself to not do them is going to be critical if that's one of your weaknesses. Marjorie, you want to take us through opportunities and threats? Yes. And I think... You mentioned this, but I think it's also important to kind of reiterate it. You either strengthen your weaknesses or you hire to them, right? So to me, it's like, I'm not very good at certain things. Like you can't see Taylor. She is on here. She's like the guru of all marketing, right? And she takes like slideshows. I assure you this would have looked like, like little stick figures. <laughs> so you find people around you that are really good at what you do. Right. And when, when you do it, you're not good at doing so. I've got Bethany. She's great at keeping me on track. I've got Brittany who keeps all the little details that we're not good at following up on. You've got to hire to weaknesses, um, opportunities. So I think it's interesting. You all need to be clear. Opportunities happen in both good and bad markets. I think when it's a great market, you think, look at all these opportunities. I think you're missing the boat. The opportunities are now, because let me just be clear that most people are in fear. And, I, and, and that's normal, right? The market has changed. What's going to happen if you try to watch the news off and you're going to be in fear because the sky has fallen. The world is ending. Everything is bad because that's what sells, right? So the opportunities right now are real because everyone stops spending money. Now, I'm not out here telling you go spend more money, but people stop consistently marketing. They stop all the things that they know they need to do. So realtors will quit. So statistically, the NAR um, economist we talked to yesterday, something like 65% of all realtors joined since the last recession, right? They have not been through this. And so a lot of them will not make it, and it will be because they don't have a plan and they aren't consistent. So things like a possible opportunities, I wrote in expired listings, because in some areas, you're going to start to see those. Um, I think also that people continue to agree to take listings at prices back from February because they're not educating their sellers on the reality of now and they will either expire or they're going to get mad at their realtor. Um, but I think right now it's also individual growth and learning. So guess what? If you're slower right now, you need to hone up on your skills. Right. So right now I'm reading even more books than I usually do, which is already a lot. I'm really working on skill sets. I'm working on what can I learn to improve, uh, whether it be in marketing, we're redoing our website, anything that we can be doing now because we have the time to do it. And then threats. So I think there are a lot of threats, but I will tell you it's not on here, but I think our biggest threat is ourself. Our biggest threat is our mindset going, you know what, what's the point? I, I don't have to go to work today. Um, I'm, you know, next year's going to stink anyway. There's nothing I can do about it because I'm watching the news too much. So I think, frankly, we're our own threat. If you don't have people around you that are positive, that are pushing you, that are saying, hey, here's some tactics that you can work on. Um, if you hang out with kind of all of the, you know, the poo-pooers. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not gonna say bad words. Um, but if you hang out with the Debbie Downers, right, that tell you the world is ending, that's that's your biggest threat, by the way. Yes, there's rate volatility, but here's the thing: can you change the market you're in? You cannot. You can you can be like, gosh, I wish it would go away. You can't change it. You're in the market you're in. So you better thrive through it, right? So lack of business clarity, huge threat. Um, you know, yes, we can have depreciation. I don't really think we'll see a lot of that. I really think we're going to see some flatness because we're not going to have enough inventory. Um, but I think now's the time to understand really. You, if a threat is, if you're going to sit with a client right now and you can't explain to them very, in a very clear way, what's actually happening in the market and what we're seeing, right? Again, if you're sitting there and like, I've seen some of the emails people are sending out, don't be doing this, that are all gloom and doom. And basically the world has ended, but Hey, I'm here if you need me, but why should you? Because everything's bad. <laughs> Please don't do that. That's a huge threat, right? So we need to be paying attention to our mindset, our messaging, how we're portraying ourselves. I also think saying I'm busy all the time is a threat. So it's really a, a personal accountability that we need to be taking, right? So to really get us through this market, I think is is quite frankly, the business threat, the biggest threat. So you I guys- totally agree. I, yeah. I was going to add into that because I think you're absolutely right. And in addition to what a perfect time to position yourself as the market expert and to be communicating the message of people are still moving. Life is still happening, right? All the reasons why people move don't stop just because of higher interest rates. No, they just don't. So SWOT analysis, you all need to complete your own. And I think we, we are the same as you, Haley. It's funny you said that. We do the same thing. I don't know if you know if you and I talked about this, but we we both take our five tops and that's what we're going to focus on or this is what we have to work on or here how we plan around. But all of you need to complete a detailed SWOT analysis and you have to let everyone be super honest, right? Because sometimes the strengths could be my attention that or a weakness could be my attention that I'm giving to a team member or it can be that I'm distracting people. We have to be able to kindly but honestly say, hey, here's the Things that we need to work on within the team as well, right? So Absolutely. I think that's super important. So it's a really great reflection. It is. And you're very good at that. All right. Now the one year life and business plan. This is something you all need to be completing. So notice it's a life and business plan. Starts with life because you have a life that's not your business. Your business is to support your life right? Your life isn't supposed to be all business and no life, right? So Haley's going to start this because speaking of the queen of like paying attention to goals and plans and personal goals, we're going to talk about that. So Haley, get us started on the, the life and business plan. Okay. Um, I love that it's life and business plan. And, and Marjorie, you're exactly right. I think something that happens whenever we go into a market shift is we go into scarcity mode. And scarcity mode can sometimes cause us to freeze. And we go all in guns blazing on 100% business. And while I fully support going all in guns blazing, because it's going to take that over the next couple of years, and we are all capable of doing it. We, we know exactly what we need to do. We also don't want to completely forget why our business is important. And that is to fuel our lives. And so... I really believe that taking stock in, okay, maybe the vacations that we take need to have a little bit tighter of a budget. Maybe the material items that we're looking to acquire have a little bit more of a purpose and a smaller budget. Maybe there's some tweaks there and maybe not, right? That's a personal answer. But when you do your SWOT analysis and you really get rooted and centered in the pieces of your business that you need to focus on and that you want to work on to continue to grow and thrive in a shifting market, you want to be able to then shift your mind to how is that going to be important to my life and to my family and to my partners and my children? Because if we forget about those things, we can very quickly become upside down and we get back into the rat race with no purpose. So the form that we're going to, we will send to you guys so that you have a copy of this, but this one really takes you through high level. And it's important, you guys, to spend a little bit of time either alone or with your partner and go through these things and talk about and dream about what are the vacations that you want to take over the next 12 months? What are the long weekends? Who do you want to be present at those long weekends? What are material items that you want to acquire? 
Those material items might be a new car. They might be a new house. They might be a watch. They might be a new bed for your dog. It doesn't matter. If it's on your heart and it's on your, your dream list, put it on the list. Your cash assets, I think, is critical to take stock in right now. Hopefully, you've already done that. But to really understand where are your stocks at, where do you want them to be in a year, and to be realistic about this, right? When you do your SWOT analysis and you start doing the financials of the business, you want to set goals and you want to have something that you're working towards attaining, but you also want to be realistic and make sure that they are attainable and measurable. And then for your real estate, what do you own this year? Are you interested in possibly buying something when prices do soften a little bit, if that's what happens in your area? Um, what do you want to own in the next year? Do you want to sell something? Really go through and just take stock in where you are and where you want to be. Can somebody go to the next slide, please? Yep, gotcha. Was okay, just thanks. thanks. Um, giving. I think giving in a year of that is coming is going to be critical. Uh, I don't know. We're going to talk about community outreach work and nonprofits in a minute. And for me, that is something that really shifted my business in a big way when I started realizing that when I go and I help others that are not as fortunate and not as blessed as I am, all of a sudden my perspective on what I want to give back and my purpose becomes so much greater. So to really get clear on whatever giving means to you, whether it's to your spiritual organization or it's to nonprofits in your community or it's even to your own family that you give to, but identify it and set your goals on that. Your spirituality, it's something that can be defined by every single one of us individually, but to know and be grounded in what do we believe and how are we worshiping or serving is important to us as humans. So what does it look like now? What do you want it to look like in a year? Fitness and health, this is going to be so important, you guys, as we work really hard over the next 12 to 18 months, as we carry a little bit different of a stress load, we want to make sure that we're caring for ourselves. Because if we don't care for ourselves, we're definitely not going to be caring for anyone else. We're not going to be showing up to those difficult conversations where our closing skills and our negotiating skills need to be on point if we're eating fast food and we're not going to the gym or sleeping enough. Our love life. Um, love life, I'm probably not the one to give advice on, but I will say that um, it's really important, right? Especially if you're in a relationship, if you're in a marriage, don't lose the marriage over a difficult market, right? Don't, don't become so obsessed with making sure you hit your numbers that you forget about the person you love at home. Um, put down, where is your love life right now? Maybe you're single. Maybe you want to start dating. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to take a year off. Whatever it is, get clarity on it and put it down and have a plan for what you're going to show up to as it relates to people in your life that you love. And then we start going into our current business. On this form, it has you jot down your taxable income from this year, how many units you closed, what your expenses were. These are all high level as well, guys. I would definitely say you need to do a, a lot more in detail financial review of your current business, but as a high level this is a really great start. Um, what is your average price that you're selling? Um, I, I would add to this a team reflection as well. How many people are on your team right now? Is it working? Do you want to sustain? Oh, here it is. Yep. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let you do this part. I did enough. <laughs> no, that's okay. So really, let's think about it. So, and the business part. So I think one thing we all have... One thing, and Haley and I can, I'm sure you're going to agree with me. We, I talk to people all the time and they're like, oh, my businesses are not great. And I'm like, what's your goal? And they don't have clarity. And so, which, how can you know if it's going well or how you're doing, if you're not really sure where you are? So I will coach people and we'll get their numbers together and we'll make them do this exercise and we'll break down their, their sales and we'll figure out what they made. And then we find out they made more than they thought, which was their goal that they didn't think they were going to hit. And, but they're still unhappy because they weren't clear. So to me, it's like, okay, you now have to take time, decide what your business is going to look like, which you want it to look like, and kind of stop making excuses if it doesn't, right? Like that's really the clarity right now. So, and in doing this, I need to take a second to say, we all have different goals and visions of what success looks like. So I think that if you've heard um, comparison is the thief of joy, 
it does not matter what this person's doing or that person's doing or perceived what this person's doing because is that really what's happening? But my goal is not yours. Your goal is not the person's next to you. So stop comparing yourself to others, right? What their success looks like is not the point. What does success look like to you? So when we're completing this plan and we look at, you know, things like I want to focus on your sources of business. So this is really kind of the key to me, because if you're not clear where your business is coming from, if you're not clear what where the leads are coming from and your closings are coming from, then how do you make a plan to either abandon what you're spending money on um, or, um, you know, can you keep going and doing what you're doing. So to me, um, this is the clarity, right? So I'm going to give you a couple tips on completing this in terms of where your business is coming from. So you need to take all your closings for 2022 and you need to say exactly from each closing what the source of business was. So for example, was it a past client? Was it a past client referral? Was it a business referral? Did you get it off the internet? Now, let's be clear, if it came from the internet, then you've got to break that down even further. The internet's a big, bad beast, right? Did it come from your website, a company website, right? You've got to get very specific, right? So now, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. First, you take those closings, assign a source. Second, you've got to start analyzing what did I do, right? What actions did I have in place to get those leads, and then you have to pay attention also, what did I spend money on that didn't generate leads? So I'm going to make up an example. If you spend 5000 a month on Zillow and you have no closings from Zillow, you've got two problems. Well, one is a conversion problem, um, but maybe you're not following up on the leads. So either you get better at closing leads from that, or we don't spend money on that, right? That That's the kind of the detailed analysis you need to be doing. So that's what should be happening right now. Where did the business come from? what's my superpower? What am I doing really well to continue getting that business? How do I carry that into next year, right? That is the point of sources of business. And in the point of current and one year from now, if all of your business came from Zillow or if all of your business came from a cold source, that's not sustainable long-term. So then we got to think about how do we get you into a warmer business, right? So that's, that's the point of this source of business current and one year from now. And then- also on here, the thing I wanted to focus on, we're not going to get into team right now, because once again, that could be a six month course, um, is your three goals for next year. So I think as we do goal setting, we think, oh, there's 77 things I want to do. And then you get nothing done. So on this form, we talk about your three main goals for 2023. So you're going to write down like you get three. So if you want, you can do a brainstorming session and come up with 15, but you don't get 15, you get three. So those three goals need to include things like number of homes you want to sell in 2023, number of listings that you want to take, you know, income that you want to make, number of hours that you want to work, right? Really, if your hours are under control, but three main goals. Now, let's also make them reasonable, right? Haley, if I sold 10 houses this year, I'm not going to say, you know what, in 2023, I'm going to sell 80. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, magic fairies, rainbows yeah. and unicorns, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> It needs to be okay. realistic and attainable, for sure. So attainable goals. Now, I'm not saying if you sold 10, think, well, the market stinks because the media told me, so I'm only selling seven. Unacceptable. 15, right? So we're going to up our goal, but let's not make them impossible. Right. Right. I'm going to add something. Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. No, you know what? You go. Go, girl. <laughs> sorry. I was just going to add on on the, the current team and the new team. I was going to share a personal experience that I just did, um, just, just to give some ideas. So I've had a personal assistant for many years and I lost her uh, four or five months ago. And so I started interviewing to replace her. Well, that's a, you know, five to $6,000 a month commitment for a salary. Well, as I started doing my analyzing of the business and my decisions, I went through and made a list of all the things that I actually need a personal assistant to do that's in person. And it was very few. Most of it is all virtual. So I found a virtual assistant for $1,500 a month. That's an amazing job. I mean, she's knocking it out of the park. And so I just shaved down $3,500 a month off of my budget from that one team exchange. Wow. So thinking of things from that perspective, right? It might be buyer's agents or listing partners, depending on how big your team is, but it also might be something as simple as that. Absolutely. And I do think... <laughs> So just so you know, Bethany just texted, I can go virtual. No, girl, no. 
No, I know as soon as I heard that, I was like, uh uh, no, no, we're not going anywhere. Um, so, but also I think about as we're coming up with these things as well, and as we're making our planning, we also need to be clear, you know, we got to be talking about money, which we're not going to do today. But I think people also get confused. Well, if I'm spending money, let's pretend it's an assistance 3000, right? But they do so much for you and they keep you grounded and, and they keep your hours down and they take care of everything and they make your life better. They, you also need to understand like the, the things that make your business better that yes, are a cost, but they're a direct benefit, right? So I think Correct. a lot of times people are like, you know what, I'll just fire everyone. It's like, oh, no, no, attention no. to that. That's so, not the advice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we do need to pay attention. Everyone needs to be running on max cylinders, right? Yeah. Um, so, okay. So let's, now what we're going to get into, you guys are going to complete your plan. But one of the biz biggest reasons you're here is lead generating tips, right? So yes. So Haley and I spent a lot of time on this. So just so you know, we coach on this, but we also we also are coach. We listen to podcasts. We take classes. I'm forever listening to economists and everything else. So we really gathered all of the things that we're working on, things that we've heard about and thought, okay, these are five things that you, you feel strongly that not only are we working on but that you need to be working on for next year. Now I'd argue every year, because just let's be clear, I'm not just starting doing these things. We've been doing them. We're just going to hone more of them. So the first one, I feel like we should do a drum roll. Yeah. Hey, this is what everyone's, everyone's like, see you later. I was listening until phone calls came in. Aren't you clear that phones are for texting, not for talking to people? I don't want to talk to the people, but here's what we're going to do. Okay, I, I don't think everyone hung up yet, but purposeful and impactful calls to your database. Now, here's the thing. Let's be super honest. We coach on making phone calls all the time. People are like, oh yeah, I totally did them. Think they're lying. Um, and we try to give you this many hours of calls this many times and you have to call your, you know, your past clients this many times and people aren't gonna do it. So here's what I need you to commit to for next year. First, to the end this year, Haley and I are committed to calling through our past client databases and our VIP databases. And what you just do is check, is there anything they need from you? And are they interested with all of the craziness in the market right now between the spring like swing of like nuttiness to now coming back down to earth? Are they create are they curious about the value of their home currently? Do they need that? Not only not are they thinking of moving, but for insurance purposes, there are many reasons you need to know the value of your home. It's not just because you're moving. How long ago was your insurance valuation done that you want to be sure that that's correct? Your, you know, your tax valuation, whatever you may want it to be. So can we, can I help you with anything? Do you need to know or are we curious about the market value of your home? Because I'm sure you saw your neighbor sold for 200,000 over asking. I just want to temper you that that's probably not realistic at this point, right? So you're going to make a phone call. Now, I've really been thinking about this a lot too, because I'm just going to be honest. Like I'm one of those coaches that I'm going to tell you the truth. Like I, I don't love making phone calls for nothing. Like the, oh, hey, 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 hey girl. Hey, how you doing? Just, you know, wanted to check in. I'm already like, I'm a high D, I'm done. So I'm not good at just making a phone call because someone told me to. I will do it with a purpose. So yeah. this is a call with a purpose that I can check in. How can I help you? What can I do for you? You know, is there anything you can, you need, right? Right now, there's a lot of confusion in the market. There's a lot of confusion with what's happening. I just wanted to check in with you. Now, while you're doing that, when, if you're one of our students, we're going to talk to you about how you stay in, in relationship with those clients and birthday programs and all these things that we teach. And people always ask, well, gosh, how do you find out this information? Well, you ask them, but this is the time when you're making these calls to say, and by the way, I cannot believe that I don't have your birthday. We love to take care of our clients and send special things. Can you share your birthday or whatever? Are you still working at Northrop Gumbern? Is this still the best sell number for you? If you haven't been making these calls, this is the time to gather information that's missing because you've got to take way better care of them than you've been taking. So Everyone needs to commit to a call like this. And Haley, you're doing these, correct? I am doing these. And I was just going to say, one of the things that we are doing that has actually been working really well is we partnered with one of our local insurance agents. And so when we call, we're offering a home evaluation update in addition to he is offering a full homeowner's insurance review to make sure that they have good policy coverage and they're getting the best rate. 
And right. we haven't had one person say no yet. They're like, oh my gosh, that's great. Thank you. I was just thinking about it, you know, or we've got a policy, but sure, we'd love for him to look at it. Um, so not only am I feeding the vendor, I'm building that relationship, but I'm calling with value. I'm calling to go, hey, the sky is not falling. Happy holidays. We're offering this to all of our clients. Would you like a follow-up call from our insurance preferred uh, partner? I can't talk. I'm sorry. Um, no, no. A lot of and, words. That's a tongue tuster. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's it, to your point, Marjorie, most of us that are high D salespeople, I don't like to call and chit chat. I don't really want to chit chat with anybody, but when I call with a piece of value, the client immediately connects with me, right? Because I'm not calling, asking for something I'm calling, offering something. And to partner with an insurance partner, it's a it's a huge benefit that our insurance guy, he's actually in the office next door to us. He was like, yeah, for sure. We'll do it all day long. That's great. Because then he goes in and he offers to do a homeowner's insurance review. He offers to do an auto review. And a lot of times he gets them a better rate. And so what is that doing to the client relationship? Circling them right back to us as we are now the provider of the win. Nice. So I wrote that down. So I love doing these because I get as much out. And I will tell you, you should, you know, you can always add a little fun story. Like in our house, we have a septic and the septic backed up. And it's as fun as it sounds when you nice. put your feet in water and it's not the water you want in your house. <laughs> and you realize you don't have septic backup coverage. Wow. Yay. That's a problem. So yeah. Yay. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, Hey, here's an example. One of my clients had, I want to make sure you don't go through something like that. In this case, it's me very easy to talk about that. Cause people are like, no, poop in the house. let's, let's yep. get a review. Right. So that is awesome. Good job, Haley. All right. You now are going to get into your superpower. So. Yeah. So getting involved with the community. So you guys, like I said, at the beginning, um, it was several years ago that I decided I, what I did was I started calling the really big public figures in the community and asking them to go to lunch with me and asking them to be my mentor. And I asked them to tell me what nonprofits, what community boards should I be part of and why? And most seniors in our communities love mentoring those of us that are younger. I was quite a few years younger back then, so it helped a little bit more. Um, but but they were all super happy to take me under their wing and tell me all about their favorite nonprofits and why I should be on them. And it actually took off like wildfire without me really realizing it was going to. And at one point I was on four different boards. Um, I was president of one and VP of another and, and I was running committees and I was the the um chair for a couple of the large events that went on and it was all great fun and it built amazing relationships. Um, the reason it built relationships is because when community members come together to care for our community, we all of a sudden have a like-minded attachment and we're doing good work together. So never in any of my community involvement did I run around talking about that I was the realtor and I was the top realtor and I sold houses and I did this and I did that. But let me tell you, they all knew. They all knew exactly what I did. I also did um, a lot of like two of the different boards that I sat on had to buy properties when I was on the board. And so, of course, I represented them. I donated the commission back to the charity. But what did that do? Continue to help my community and also build my relationships as the agent. So when we have a little bit of extra time, or even when we don't, when we choose to give back to our community and really get involved, it makes a big impact because it helps our own mindset when we're giving back and helping those that are not as fortunate as us. And it also builds relationships with the with the top people in the community. Um, the, the local government meetings, um, that one I added because I sit on the board for our economic development partnership. And that is our local governmental um, center that basically manages all the moving parts within our city. They work with the city governmental uh, board to do building of new streets and when new companies move in and who do we allow to come in and do we give them a tax break and what are they going to bring to the community? It's all of those decisions being made. And so about six years ago, I joined them as a member and then I was asked to sit on the board a couple of years later. And the relationships that I've built from doing that, and mind you, you guys, I'll just be really honest. When I first got in there and I went into the room, 
the first thought in my head was, I have no business being in this room. I have nothing to contribute when I'm sitting next to the CEO of the hospital, the CEO of all the major companies. This, I mean, all the C-suites were in the room. And then there was me, little old realtor Haley. And so I've always led my life with the uh, fake it till you make it scenario. And so I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to show up and I'm going to chime in and talk about the real estate market. And now all of those C-suites are my clients. I've sold and bought for all of them. The CEO of all three hospitals are my clients. And two weeks ago, they asked me to sit on a panel with the CEO of the hospital, the CEO of one of our major oil companies, the CEO of the chamber, and me on a panel for the Houston Business Journal to talk about the changing market. And I, again, had to check myself and go, I am so not qualified to be sitting on this panel. But I share that to say, it is not because I'm any different than any of you guys. The difference is I put myself in that position and I was consistent with showing up, giving back to the community and building my relationships. And I've done it for years, but you guys, I've made some of the best friends. I've made some of the best clients and I have so much fun. In April, I chair our waterway um, festival and that is where our community shuts down our entire waterway. We provide all the arts um, and culture pieces for our senior citizens, for our foster children, and for all of our schools. And we fund it through our Waterway Festival, where we have 500 artists come in from around the world and set up tents, and we sell art all weekend. And I'm running it. So um, I didn't get there by not putting in the hard work, right? And it's still hard work, but it's so much fun. And it's, in my opinion, when we run a real estate business or a mortgage business, those are the pieces within our communities where we really become rooted in doing good and giving back. And then we reap the rewards. So that's my no pitch. Doubt. Get involved with the community. I mean, I think, and also, so to me, it's what are you passionate about? What are you interested in? Like, yes. I joke about this, but it's true. Like, if you hate animals, which then there's something wrong with you. There's definitely like, I have lots of dogs. So, uh, you know, you hate animals, you've got a problem, but don't go join the SPCA board because that's disingenuous, right? And again, if you dislike children, don't do join the children's hospital board um, because it's just going to show that that's not really where your passions are. So Absolutely. you all have passions. Now we can have many passions. So don't go, don't go from no boards to 16 because then you are going to be spread too thin. But what is it that you guys are passionate about? What board could you get involved with next year? What nonprofit could you get involved with? What charity? Like they all need your time and energy. So we're super all involved with the food bank. We go and volunteer there and I do fundraising for them. I'm on the Piedmont Housing Alliance, which is um, for affordable housing here in our town. I'm on the Children's Hospital Board. I do a ton with the SPCA and I adopt their dogs. But what is it that you're interested in that, that drives you and is thriving for you, right? That you are excited about, but that becomes evident. And then you are like, same thing with Haley. I joined Piedmont Housing. There was the mayor and there were all these people. And I'm like, I don't with these people that have no idea who I am, by the way, but then I end up chairing a committee, right? And so I think when they see that you're interested and you have ideas on, and you're very committed to their organization, it makes a huge difference. And so, and, and it's just like you said, enjoyable. I, I love being able to know that I'm giving back to this town that's given me so much. So I'm going really need to think about what is it that I'm passionate about? How do I get involved? Right. And, and then you don't have to be the CEO or Haley right now to get on these boards. They need your help. They want you to be involved. Right. Yeah. So you just volunteer. You can volunteer to join a committee and help with one of their one of their events or one of their projects that they're working on. And you literally just volunteer. And that's how it starts. Yes. So that's a big one you need to add. And then I'm going to get into what I, I've always, I've kind of changed to like my tribe of 20. I love a tribe. Like to me, my tribe are like, they're my people, my role, my ride or die, like the people that I love. Right. So if you really think about it, like how many relationships can you really, really, really manage? So, you know, there was the VIPs and we were thinking about a hundred of them and 50 of them. And it was like, wow, it's very hard for me to be in deep relationship with 50 or a hundred people ab above and beyond my family, my team, my clients, 
you know, I do a podcast, which I love with you guys and coaching. It's like, okay, I only have so much bandwidth as do we all, right? So to me, it's like, this is what I'm calling my VIPs, my true people that I want to be committed to, that I want to give back to, that help contribute to my business, that I can make a difference in their life. So it's like, okay, instead of trying to go wide, I'm going deep. And I think that's especially important as we kind of go into changes of market. But also, I think we all know you're like, oh, yeah, two years ago, I talked to him and it's like, what? You're not in a relationship anymore. So just simply, so a VIP list. So to me, it's your vendors that take great care of you that you rely on. It's your business partners. It's the people that to me, I have my team. My core team is me and my five. So four and me, then I have my secondary team. So to me, my secondary team is my attorney. It's my home inspector. It's my insurance guy. It's everyone that helps my clients get their home purchased or sold, right? That's my residual team. So that's where my tribe of 20 really comes in. It's my financial advisor. That means that hopefully I'm not like 192 years old and still selling real estate, right? So who are the people that take care of me and take care of my clients that I want to send them to that are going to make a difference in their life? So then we got to be in relationship with them. So what does that look like? So to me, as simply as, now there are many more steps to this that we do, but I'm not going to give you a hundred because you'll never do them. But look, if they're in your true tribe, if they are your VIPs, if there are the people that take the best care of you or that you can make a difference in their lives and refer your clients to and vice versa, call them twice a month, right? On purpose, what's happening? Can I help you with anything? What are you seeing in the market right now? What are you struggling with in your business? How can I help you? That's one. Then coffee or lunch at least once a month, right? So to me, that's pretty straightforward. I need to be in front of them. We break bread with people we're in a relationship with. We do quarterly happy hours where we invite all of our tribe of 20, our VIPs, as well as anyone who closed in the last quarter and anyone that's in the car with us right now are coming on the market or, or on the market, right? So I want all those people to engage with and be in front of me. And then we have to have a tiered referral program, right? So anytime we get a referral upon first referral, there's a gift, second referral, there's a gift. We'd have to take care of them and honor them for thinking of us when there's a referral that they have, as well as a birthday program, right? So those are all things that to me, if we're going to be taking care of these relationships, we have to have in place. Um, so that's something that you guys need to be working on as well is how, what, what do we really need to do for these most important relationships that we have, right? So that's to me is the, that tribe of 20, that VIP list that I can make a big difference for that, but can help me as well. Haley, you want to talk about video plan? I will. I'm going to move through it a little quickly because I don't want us to run out of time. And yeah. I just realized what time it is. But um, the video plan, you guys, we all know video is where it's at. And when we have time on our hands, if we're not as busy and crazy as we have been, it's time to be making videos and pushing them out, but with a plan. Um, I put a video embedded into my monthly newsletter. And I tell you, if that newsletter is like two days late, I get emails and text messages asking where it is because they watch it. They want to know what I have to say. I always say something about the market. I always say something about, you know, the yurt. I just slept in with the spiders. There's always something right. Um, but they want to see the videos. So come up with a video plan. And include your team if you have a team. So we just launched one and my entire team is in charge of doing videos on all the top restaurants in our city. Um, that also goes into the next slide that we're about to talk about. Um, but in the video plan, make sure you add in your vendors. We just did a big highlight with one of our builders that's actually building my new house. We walked the, the site with him and he introduced himself and that's gotten tons of views as well. So come up with a plan and think about things that you can highlight in your community that are also going to sync to Google that are going to push up your views and everything. Um, and then, of course, make sure it's hitting the database. And then, Marjorie, I don't know, you want to run through Google Ads and Web Profile. I'll just say this, this really comes from, you know, Marjorie and I, we always believe our database is number one, and it is, right? Our relationships are the tried and true. However, making sure that we're doing all of the free things that we can do so that when searches happen, we are still coming up at the top of the search engine is really big. Um, this past year, I invested in an SEO consultant, and she did a lot of work on my website and on our Google My Business profile page. Um, and we closed five deals this year from Google, which has never happened in my career. So 
for what it's worth, that really does matter. And going in and, and working on your Google My Business page is free. So um, that's all I'll say about that, March. Take it over. No, no, I mean, I think the clarity is utilize and make sure you show up big in all the places that if I don't know you and I'm looking to purchase a home and I'm going to Google, you know, buying a home in Charlottesville or in Woodlands, Texas, right? So if someone's going to pull up the naturals like Zillow, is your profile updated? Are your solds on there? Do you have a video talking about what you can do? So I don't pay for any of that. I'm a big fan of any outgoing like portal that doesn't cost me anything like Facebook reviews or Zillow reviews or Google reviews, right? Those things are super important because that's what people are looking for when they're Googling or before they contact you in any way, they're going to surf and find out about you, right? So you've got to look good. You've got to have reviews other people need to say how fantastic you are. Because look, I can be like, I'm great. I'm great and fantastic. You should work with me. I'm so fabulous. Who cares? Right. But someone else, a third party saying, hey, you got to call them because they're great. So utilize those, get those reviews on all of these places. Use social media well, right? Like, yeah, you know, you're perfect. Yeah, yeah, but, but not only that, it's like, your perfect world and how perfect you are and how beautiful you are and your perfect hair and your perfect kids and your perfect car and your perfect house. Eh. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. Like, don't be too perfect on social media because then people are like, I uh, no, cannot relate to them. Right. So be real on there, but be consistent. Right. And then review your business partners, send out reviews on all these portals for your tribe of 20 clients that own businesses, because they will really appreciate that a lot. So it's a great time right now to be doing those things. So we want to make sure that we don't forget those, because while we want really warm businesses, those people that are they're searching for realtors need to look on these places. And then that leads us into, Haley, you want to talk about this? Realign coaching. Yeah, so Marjorie and I uh, decided that we are going to offer a very small group of coaching for this next year. Um, we really are going to focus on our work-life balance. We want to make sure that we stay integrated with work and life. Um, obviously, really refining our lead flow, where it's coming from, and putting strategy to the business. Um, there will be all the important aspects of the coaching that we'll go through. So the fundamentals of the finances, the structures, the P&Ls, the personal budgets, all of those things we'll, we'll definitely be coaching on. Um, and then ultimately saving our money. What, what are we actually taking home? And staying rooted in what is our purpose in doing any of the things that we do and, and doing them with intention. Yes. Um, if you guys have any questions right now, now would be the time to also put your questions into the chat and I'll read those for us and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, we do have two different programs that we're going to offer. Um, you want to read this part, Marge? Oh, sure. So we're, we'll go into the two programs, but what we really realized was it's a year long and everyone needs more leads. So frankly, Often we would start with, let's talk about your money and let's talk about your team and let's really focus on those, which we will be doing, but you all need leads. So we are focusing on how can we help you really generate leads from your database, from your sources, from videos, from whatever it may be for the first six months. Then we really want to dive deeper into your finances and your team leadership and your management and making sure that your hours are under control. Um, again, I think that's super important, but if we don't get you leads and closings and everything else and get you through that year, then the rest of it becomes secondary anyway. And then um, we have two different programs we're offering and you can talk about that. Yeah. So we're going to do a foundation level program. So if you're a newer agent or you don't have a team or have just gotten back into the business, the foundation level will be 500 a month. It'll be a one time a month, 90 minute call in addition to monthly webinars that we will be sending out. So um, Marjorie and I do this for our teams and for other coaching clients already. Um, the foundation level will be a group call. So you'll be learning from other people as well and have Q&A. So it will really be a 90-minute session with a topic and real live coaching. And then the mastery level will be if you're an experienced agent, if you've got a team, if you really want to work on restructuring, 
building a team uh, and really getting into the nuts and bolts of the business aspect of it in a finite way, then that will be 2,500 a month. There will be two calls a month. Um, those will be groups of three people, and they will also include monthly webinars. So each month we'll have a topic that we're really going to dive deep on, and those will be recordings that you get. So you can watch it as many times as you would like. Um, and then you also, if you're in the mastery level, are welcome to come out for a site visit uh, to either my, my own office or to Marjorie's office and see our teams and how we operate. And that's when you get to really see the insides of all of our checklists and all of our materials and listing presentations and buyer presentations and how our teams function and operate and all of that. Um, question is, can we go back to the video plan slide again so that they can see it? Yes, we can toggle back there. So uh, I will ask you, Taylor in her magician way to get back yes. there. And the next question is, can you move from foundation to mastery in one calendar year? Um, that will depend on where your business is at. So that would be a conversation with one of us to really do a review on your business. And then we can give you guidance on what might be a good fit. Yep. Someone asked, will the slide deck be emailed? We certainly can get the slide deck. Rebecca has it actually. So if anyone would like copies of the slide deck, Rebecca can absolutely pass those out. Um, yeah. I also see, so Steve asked, what about younger agents? They don't do Facebook because it's the older ways. Yes, us old people. Here's the thing. You have to attract clients. And let me just make sure you're clear on the two biggest demographics that are moving. So maybe you young little whippersnappers aren't on the facial book anymore, but guess what? A lot of your clients are. So you may be a certain age or demographic, but right now the two biggest moving demographics are first time home buyers. By the way, the median age for them is now 36. And then anyone that's 58. Right. So right now, the 58 year olds may not be on the TikTok, right? They're starting. But my point is, don't not pay attention to where the people are because of where you are. Right. right. Like I'm 51. I think I'm cool in 22, but I need to be on the sites where the 22 year olds. But frankly, I need to be where the 30 year olds to the 60 year olds are because those are the people that are buying and selling. Yes. So go where the people are, not just where you are would be the key on that one. It's such a good point. And I will add to that to make sure that your content is speaking to your avatar of the client. Um, because if the avatar of the client is 36 to 58, doing a TikTok dance video about something irrelevant, probably not going to sell them on why you're the real estate expert. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, again, I think it's key is know, know your audience and then you have to be where they are. Not right. everyone isn't 22, everyone isn't 58, right? So a bunch of people asking for the slides. Um, that's awesome. So the slides we will get into, we'll get them through Summit, through the lenders. You guys can reach out to us as well, because I think on the last slide, if you're interested in coaching, um, we have our contact information. So admin at Haley and then Bethany is also my assistant that we can get you more information on the levels. We will be doing intake calls with everyone who's interested, kind of see where you are, what your goals and how we can best help you. We'll schedule a call to see what works best. But like I said, we'll make sure you guys get um, copies of the slideshow. Um, let's see what else. I just want to There's one more question. Uh, how do you fit all of your face to faces in a month, 20 lunches per month with your VIPs? Do you double them up? Are you having break breads every day? So my answer to that is uh, I don't actually see all 20 every single month. However, I do invite them to group lunches. I always leverage my time. It's very rare that you will ever see me at lunch with one person. I also don't usually do lunches. I do coffees and I back to back coffees and it's about 30 minutes and it starts at 7 a.m. And it's a revolving door through the coffee shop and everybody knows me and everybody knows it's their coffee time with me. And then my happy hours is where I double up and they come to the happy hours. So I am getting the FaceTime. Yes. That's the same for you, Marjorie. Yeah. So we do, I try to do as many, let's all get together. Cause frankly, the more connected I can make them, the better it is because then they're in a group helping each other as well. Yeah. So that happy hour quarterly, everyone gets invited to, but we'll do little events, coffees as well. I'm, I love to eat. So lunch, coffee, whatever it may be, um, you know, feed me and I will come. <laughs> That's for sure. Right. But right. also think money, right? So we don't need to be doing $100 lunches. We can be doing coffees. We can be doing a sandwich. So we don't have to do, but doubling them up, but no, not every day. My goal is five, at least a week or 10, if it's coffees as well. So yeah. you need to be spending the majority of your time in listing appointments, buyer consults with your clients, and then filling back, filling, especially, but also filling with the VIPs. 
So as a close, you guys, thank you for jumping on. For everybody who wants a copy of this slideshow, please see the lender that invited you. They can definitely email it to you. Uh, in addition to the forms, the, the high-level life and business plan that was in here, they can send that to you as well. Um, Marjorie and I have decided to offer these few slots of coaching uh, really out of wanting to help everyone as well as ourselves, right? Because when we collaborate and we teach, we are learning from you guys, you are learning from us, and we're headed into a market where we're going to need the support of one another. So that was our intention and in offering. Several of you met us in person when we came out to the summit funding event and asked us to offer something. So that's our purpose in doing this. Um, Marjorie, I'm super grateful to be your bestie and to teach with you. Um, thank you to Summit, Jimmy, and your team and everybody for having us. And uh, have a great holiday season, you guys. And do your business plan and go get your lead. Thank you, guys. And thank Haley and then Jimmy and everyone at Summit. And all you guys, hey, listen, you took an hour out. I could only see some of you, but very few of you were on your phone. I have to say I'm super proud because I know it's almost you know impossible not to be texting or on the social media. So thanks for listening to us.